The next station is Baker Street. Change for the Bakerloo, Circle, Palestine City and Jubilee. Exit for Merlin Chapel. Fight the gap between the train and the platform. Well, I am not sure where we're going today, Marcus. It's elementary, my dear Paul. Let's start the show. Well, we're leaving Sherlock Holmes in the background, and of course his address is 221 B Baker Street. And that's where we are starting our special trip today, because we just got out at the Baker Street station. Now, we're actually walking along, is, is this Euston Road? Is this Marlebone? Or Marlebone Road? Anyway, what we're doing, we are travelling from Baker Street to King's Cross St Pancras. Not only on the tube, no, we're actually going to walk it. It's about a mile, so let's get going. Well, I am assured that it is Marlebone Road. <laughs> Let's just check the sign. Um, anyway, there's so much to see along this route, and the reason we're doing it is because there was one day that um, we needed to get to Euston Station, and the tube wasn't running, so we took a taxi, and we drove the whole way along from Baker Street right up to Euston, and King's Cross is just beyond it. But there are so many things to see along this route. Of course, you can start off with Sherlock Holmes, but right next to it is Madame Tussauds or Two Swords or Two Suds. Did you use <laughs> Did you use two bars of soap in the uh, or maybe it was two bars of wax because this is the Wax Works Museum. And have you ever been to this one, Paul? We have been here before. I remember taking a picture with David Beckham back in the day. <laughs> oh right. Well, I wonder if he's been melted down. But um <laughs> <laughs> because they do they do reuse the wax you see oh my god recycling <laughs> recycling no i'm sure he's still there but i haven't been for a while but we've been to a few other waxworks museums around the world i can remember we, we went to a rather dodgy one in niagara falls oh my god in that canada one was scary yeah um there was a very very ropey michael jackson in there and i think they had oh I, they had the queen didn't they and uh, and prince charles but uh, they they didn't look anything like them <laughs> This is the York Gates and it's one of the entrances to Regent's Park. I'm just reading here that it says these gates were originally installed in 1958 at the Edinburgh Gate to Hyde Park at Knightsbridge, but then removed in 2008. They were installed at the York Gate entrance to the Regent's Park as part of the celebrations for the Diamond Jubilee of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II in 2012 and opened by His Royal Highness Prince Edward the Earl of Wessex on the 11th of June 2013. Next to York Gate is 
the Royal Academy of Music. I love this. I think this is one of the little taxi booths where drivers way back in the day would have stopped off for their break. I think some of them still actually do exist. Maybe this one's open. Who knows? Is there a doctor in the house? This is the bus stop for Harley Street, the great medical area. And that is the street over there in front of us, Harley Street. Look, Paul, over there. Why? I'm feeling right at home. It's Ulster Place. You can tell that we're not that far from central London because there is the BT Tower right over there. Well, we're now passing Regent's Park Station and that is on the Piccadilly line. There are several entrances to Regent's Park along Marlebone Road. It's funny because when you walk along here, you see tube stations on different lines. The next one coming up is Great Portland Street, which is on the Circle and Metropolitan lines. We really are on Euston Road now as we continue our journey, and there's an even better view of the BT Tower from here. So I think that we're only a few yards away from Oxford Street. There is an interesting mix of architecture along this part of Euston Road. There's like banking buildings and offices over there, Santander. Uh, whereas on this side, there's sort of remnants of older buildings and little cafes and things. It's a nice, interesting mix to it, I think. And I see another underground roundel ahead. I wonder what station that is. Turns out it's Warren Street and it's on the Northern Line. London is a bit like a jigsaw puzzle. And when you put the pieces together, it's quite interesting what you can come up with. So there's Warren Street Station there. And we swing over here and we are at University College London. I had no idea where that was before. This is Euston Square Station on the Metropolitan Line and we are a little bit familiar with this one um, although normally on the other side of the road because this is where we get off the Metropolitan Line from Uxbridge when we are catching a train at Euston because it's only just down the road. So to give you some sort of proximity between Euston Square and Euston we have Euston Square just here and just swing over and where that bus is just in the distance that's Houston thank you very much for watching don't forget to subscribe like and comment bye for now feeling right at home Paul with Albany Street or is it Albany? <laughs> Albany <laughs> Isn't it the state capital of New York? Well, yes. not that right at least. <laughs> so we're nearly at the end of this journey, Paul. We're at Houston now. Have a look at the map. So we are right here, Houston, and we are going to King's Cross. At Houston, you could catch a train up to the north, including Scotland. Oh wow, look! Here are, here are some of the places you could visit from Aberdeen to Birmingham and from Blackburn to Cambridge. And I see that Burton on Trent gets a mention there as well. Even more destinations listed here. Well look, there's Paisley, which is just outside Glasgow, Oxford, Nottingham, Preston, Perth, 
Manchester, Newark, lots of places that we've been to before. Well, everyone, I think it is time for the home stretch. I think it's just a few more meters to go, so on and, we go. And this walk doesn't really take that long at all. Of course, we've stopped off to do some filming along the way, but I reckon you could do it in about half an hour at a good pace. It's a nice little walk, just a, a day out, a different part of London. And I think it's nice just to have a bit of a leisurely stroll along here, because normally when we are in this area... <laughs> rushing, rushing. Yeah, we've got a suitcase like various other people you can see. Um, so we don't have a suitcase today, we're not going anywhere in particular. Um, so there's no need to rush around. probably make out the spires of St Pancras International Station in the background but just before we reach it you pass the British Library it says it's always open online and it's open for everyone Look at this, it's so ornate. This is the St Pancras Hotel. It's been restored in recent years and I can remember a few years ago, we went for a drink in the bar. And it's right next to St Pancras Station. King's Cross has had a fantastic renovation in recent years. Uh, for many years you weren't able to see the facade at all, but now it has been refurbished to a fantastic standard. There's also many restaurants in the Coles Yard area where you can go out for like a, a lunchtime meal or drink or a night out. St Pancras International also has all your shopping needs. Here at St Pancras International I absolutely love this sculpture by Paul Day. It is of two people embracing and it's meant to encapture the essence of train travel from days gone by. Today, of course, St Pancras International, uh, the clue is in the name, is the epitome of modern travel because you can catch a train here to France. In fact, we have done several times to Lille and we hope to go there in the very near future. So we hope you have enjoyed joining us for our little walk today and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.